Yeah. Hello and welcome to the last series for today for the first day of the group stage of the International 3 Orange and Virtus Pro will be facing each other and we'll see which one of these two teams gets ahead first to note um, you see that my overlay might look slightly off but it's actually the names of the teams that are slightly off in the game itself for Valve for Dota 2 so don't blame the overlay for that one. Of course, we are here with Bidiz as well, my co-caster. Bidiz, tell us why this match is so important again. Alright, so, these teams are both in Group B, obviously. They are both 1-3 and three right now. They uh, both have the same results as well on top of that. They're both 1-1 one one against Team Liquid, who is currently sitting in the top 4. And they're both 0-2 against Tung Fu, who is also sitting in the top 4 and is actually top 1 right now, I believe. Um, if you if these teams split the series and go one one, they'll both be in the you know fifth or sixth position with a chance to break in the top four. If one of the teams two owes the other, they're gonna sit solidly with a chance to break into the top four and start off in the winners bracket, which is a huge advantage. So the winners bracket obviously have to get lose twice in the main event to get knocked out. Whereas in the losers bracket, you lose once, you're done. Yeah. Uh, every team wants to be in the top four. Winning two zero here is a great way to set yourself up to be in the top four. Whereas getting 0 2 and your chances are greatly diminished. Yeah, we already see that uh, Orange... I, I, I mean, this has to be a plan of them because they ban out the Darkseer and the Batrider, leaving the IO in the pool. Virtus Pro, of course, not hesitating, picking that one up first. Lifestealer and Lone Root banned for Virtus Pro, and there goes Visage pickup for Orange together with the Nature's Prophet. So I think they're pretty happy with their picks. But they are up against Virtus Pro's IO, and that's definitely not an easy one to deal with. You said also uh, before the game actually started, after previous game. I mean, both teams known for being fairly high aggression teams. Yep. And both teams now with this lineup, I mean, with already an IO as well as a Visage, they could go aggressive with this. Uh, Virtus Pro Ten is a team which, for me, when they're on land, their success is going to be relative to how their supports play. And NS and Arzart, whenever they're on land, they're absolute monsters. They're the reason why they were able to take a game off of Liquid with relative ease. Oranges their support duo just did a great job of roaming around the map and finding kills for them. So this game, get, giving Io to a support, that's going to let him control the game if BP gets off to a good start. Uh, which, once again, if they got off to a good start, that's because their support. Supports control the early game. A good portion of the early game, at least. Uh, Visage and Nature's Prophet were two of the heroes in Orange's win over Liquid. Mushi was the one playing the Prophet, and he did a phenomenal job, especially in that last final major fight that really set up the game for them and let them get three sets of racks in one fell swoop. Yeah. Uh, Visage was played by Extinct, and he went off that game. He had a score of like 18, 5, and 20 or something. It was, he had a ridiculous it was insane. game. Uh, and that was as a 5 of Visage that didn't get any items early on. He eventually got a 4 staff around like the 30 minute mark, then he got a pipe, and then he had really late Aghanims. So this game, uh, I'd expect them to pair him with something like Sand King or Nyx again to go with the standard orange aggressive duos. Uh, Extinct and Net are really good at roaming around the map together, just like Arzard and NSR. Although with this Wisp for Virtus Pro, I don't expect them to be roaming the map much. To go into the bans for this phase, that ban on Kunkka is sort of a respect ban for Mushi. Kunkka is a very good hero against Wisp CK. It's also very good against any Wisp combo because you can see exactly where they're porting now. Hit them with a torrent when they land, follow it up with a boat, and that's a lot of damage and disable instantly when that combo is TPing in. Uh, they also ban OD because it's a great solo mid laner, and that's a hero that's been a real force in this tournament thus far, uh, demanding a lot of attention, usually getting picked or banned in the first two picks for each team. Uh, Coddle's banned out by Orange. Coddle is a hero when paired Orange with Wisp and any aggressive melee hero, whether it's CK, whether it's Sven or Tiny or anything, really. It's a very good lane. Um, Coddle is also one of the stronger laners, as well as Visage. He's good at combating a Visage because it's just so much AoE damage coming out from a Coddle early on. Plus, with a Wisp, it's an infinite mana for your tri lane, basically. Good ban on that from Orange. They also take out the Bounty Hunter. They studied Virtus Pro. 
They like to have a bounty hunter set up there with TP ganks, and that's also a lot of extra money for their team as well. Yeah, and Orange D, they reply with the Naga Siren, of course, also the Sleep, one of the better counters up against the IO Chaos Knight combination. When they come in, you just sleep, and you greatly diminish the time that they are there for, so Naga Siren will be a hero for Orange that are going to be having fun with. Um, still, could be either way, could be a carry, could be a support. I'm kind of hoping it's going to be turning into a support here, just to allow for KYX by maybe picking up a gyrocopter, as that one is still in the pool. Yep. And uh, the Lena now for Verge Pro, so that's going to be a trial lane for them. You've got yourself the Chaos Knight with the Chaos Bolt setting up for the Light Striker Ray Tether coming in with the Reality, Reality Rift, and that's going to be Verge Pro having a pretty solid lane. It will still be a safe the, lane, most likely. The one thing I'll say about VP's trial lane is it's very good with a lot of nuke damage, but at level 1 it's not too terribly strong. They're very, very powerful at level 2, and after level 2 as well, but at level 1 they're pretty weak. Um, as far as this Naga goes, well, like we said it's every time that Naga's picked. It can actually go to any lane, and it's hard to predict where it's going to go. Uh, there's There are a lot of options for picks with Orange's lineup. They could jungle the Furion and get an offlaner. They could mid the Furion, get an offlaner. They could offlane the Furion, put Naga mid. They could support the Naga, pick a carry and a mid. They could pick Naga as a carry and get a support and a mid. They have so many options. Options galore, and actually, orange. They not. They not really know. They don't really know what to go for here. Ticking into their bonus time quite heavily. So uh, also, by the way, once again, for a reminder for people watching, if you have Twitter, make sure the word world knows about this event. Not specifically this game, but just hashtag TI3. Make it trending worldwide and keep it trending worldwide. Just spam that Twitter account and just say sorry to friends that are not into Dota 2 if you are having those on your <laughs> Twitter. And there's an alchemist. That's here that slipped through that I didn't even notice because he's just Orange been banned or picked in the first yeah. two every single game. Every single game. Apart from one game for Liquid, but Orange is able yep. to pick it up. I think they're going to be fairly happy with that. That does make Naga Siren into most likely a support, though. And that is a very safe trial lane. So I'm expecting to have just safe trial lanes all over the place. Are, are you expecting a safe trial lane? It's not necessarily a support Naga. It still could be a carry Naga and a mid Alchemist, or a carry Alchemist and a mid Naga. And they could get a support like a Sand King, for example. Uh, I wouldn't bank on it being a support Naga just yet. But the Puck pickup for VP feel is a good pick and it's a standard pick. Puck is a strong mid that can set up very easily for Wisp ganks with his coil. And they also need an offlaner on VP for sure. Or maybe a solo safe lane. I'm looking at a hero like Clockwork for example. Yeah. I think he might be their best bet. Although they could go with something up. Oh, just <laughs> clock band. Smart band coming out from orange. Uh, another hero if they want to go a little bit wacky, a little off the wall, Broodmother. Is a good option to create some chaos in the game. Pun intended. I don't. Re I don't <laughs> like the brute mother here. I would. I hope that we don't see it. Not because I don't think it fits, but just because it doesn't make for that very. Brute against nice an alchemist, thing. you just feed him a lot of money, so that's never good. Yeah. Dragon Knight Band is still in the pool as well. One of the heroes that we have seen having a uh, very high priority in the last couple of games that yep. we've seen today. So, two heroes making it all the way through to the end. So we have got already a bit of a shift in the meta game. Of course, these two teams. We've seen, like, we're, we're having two different groups, and I'm actually thinking, like, the, the groups will have different progress in terms of how they play as well, right? It, very possible. That, because that's going to be very interesting. Of course, maybe the the orange the group B, so the orange, Virtus Pro, Liquid teams that we've seen today, we've seen three teams of group B. Not really that team fight heavy. On the other side, we have group A, where we've seen DK, LGD, and one more, MUFC. Yep. Fairly team fight heavy. Ten seconds. Yeah. Oh. And here's Tide Hunter. Never mind me. So I didn't say a word. We still don't know for sure, but I think that's gonna be a Tide support. Still, it could technically be any of those three heroes mid. I think we're pretty set on it being an all flame Furion. So it could be a safe lane Furion and aggressive tri lane. Could be a solo lane and Alchemist mid. Yeah, aggressive tri lanes with double melee never tend to work out though that well. Especially if one of the melee doesn't have magic community like a Nyx or a Juggernaut. So I highly doubt Orange Ten is going to aggro tri lane. And I don't think BP will either just because of how weak they are at level 1. Five but there is a chance that BP just 
goes to the aggressive triangle. They're like, nope, we've got a hero that'll beat the sphere on 1v1. We're gonna put him there. I guess it could technically be an offlane titan, just a straight up jungle fury on two. Tons so, of options yeah, for options uh, orange. Lord. Oh, and another doom for the second time that we see him today. Picked up by Virtus Pro. I like I it. Like I really like the doom pick. Ohio's gonna be picking up the Furion for orange. Extinct is gonna be playing their Visage yet again. Mushi's on whoa, the Alchemist. Whoa! Ho! Hold your horses! KYX no. by Tidehunter. Yep. He's gonna farm. Or they could swap and try to trick us, because they did swap earlier. I'm just yeah, throwing that out there too. And Met is gonna be on the Naga, so that means Naga and Visage are the supports. For now. That could all change though. Please don't swap. That's my that's my <laughs> one request. I wanna see farm tide. Oh, that's just so fun to watch. Ten it is. Remaining. I'll let you introduce the Virtus Pro. Five seconds we do, of course, have a battle of Malaysia versus Russia here. Malaysia versus Russia. Yeah, that is so true. Uh, we have got Arsard playing the Lena with the Arcanium here. We've got Illidan Airman Stormrage playing the Chaos Knight with NS on the IO, so that's a trial lane right there. We've got KSI, or Xe playing the Doom, he'll be going on the offlane slash jungle, whichever he prefers to go for. And Crazy, or Tima Wild playing his signature puck, he'll be having a lot of fun with that on the mid lane. Yep, and judging by uh, the items on KYXY, as well as being pulled tangos, solo he's going to be tight. solo mid. Yep. Taking that's a page down out of the book of Zhao 8. bottom rune, yeah. That's straight out of the way from Zhao 8 and LGD. They also pulled just like LGD does. That's interesting to note as well, because that's the first team we've seen do that. Where the mid that's going through branches also gets full tango, so he can get a quicker bottle. Uh, Mushi with his item build and where he's running, it's obvious he's going to be the safe lane farmer in the tri lane. I highly doubt that they're going to leave him alone. And VP is just oh, abandoning top, top, and they're going to straight up jungle doom, judging off of KSI's item build. Someone needs to give KYX by a bit more items for the tide hunter, though. Only got uncommons and such. <laughs> you can't respect a man that doesn't have a squiddles. No, no, like Squiddles is uh, it's not that bad to have, but you have to have the shark on your head. I mean, this is true. Yeah. Or the squid hat. Squid hat's pretty cool too. Yeah. Uh, Net is camping the top rune as well as KSI. See who goes for it if it's there. Let's see who gets lucky. Well, at the bottom. Never mind that. And Arza just kills it. Big time CK set coming out of uh, Illidan. I over know, here. right? That looks. He's uh, got pretty, the full set too. Pretty cool. The Hell Strider. The mythical mound. The only yep. thing he misses is his tail, but he got some lights for it. Uh, this is kind of scary if you're in BP shoes. They're giving absolute free farm to an alchemist. Yeah, Mushi alchemist. And not that. Mushi is probably going to go Battle Fury, and if his supports stack the jungle for him, that is scary, because he gets huge quick if you don't gank him. They do have the Wisp CK, they do have a Puck to set it up, they do also have a Doom. So they can definitely gank him. He's gonna wait and see if they do it. And look at this um, Ohio on bottom lane. He went boots first. Oh. Just gonna save him because he got really out of position there. Yep. Light strike ready doesn't hit. Still some harassment coming in from an S. Oh, an S. An X actually takes a lot of harassment from himself, but it's tangle. It's gonna be fine. Still two seconds sun coming off from uh, from Illidan. I mean, he uses a lot of mana for that. Does have one clarity, but he has to be careful not to run yep. that out too often because. Only one clarity means that he can't really be going aggressive that often. But this is the same situation that we've seen earlier today as well. I mean, this Nature's Prophet, he knows he won't be getting that much. But if he just delays the level 6 on a Ness, that's a big deal. Because, as you said, I mean, they can gank at some point Mushi on his uh, Alchemist. But until that happens, the, I mean, that first, first you have to have IR level 6 before you can actually have a successful gank. Yep. And... Delaying and as long as he doesn't die in this lane, he's doing a good job. He accidentally let the one minute camp spawn because he was too busy, uh, almost dying. And made some aggression coming out from KYXY. And Crazy on Puck is just like, yeah, I'm gonna orb away from you. I don't wanna die. In the meantime, Tier 1 Tower getting uh, killed off here on the top lane. I mean, this is just Orange wanting to get as much gold as they can in the early game, as much ahead as they can, before the TK Wisp get too big, or get big to start ganking around. If they can get ahead before that happens, that's gonna be a big deal for them, as we see Crazy getting a illusion rune here. Takes a creep wave with him. 
And we'll be able to pick yep. up all those groups as well if he still wants to. And he doesn't miss out on any experience because he dragged a few boys with him. Good play from him. Uh, if you look at Mushi's item build, I notice a lot of Western carry players don't do this. He started off with a ring of protection, four branches and tangos. He knows that that doom's gonna go straight to the jungle, gets a quick bass, and that helps facilitate their push so much. So lets all their creeps tank extra shots from the tower. And his team, of course, is gonna let him pick up all these last hits. He's using acid to help kill off the creep way faster. Now they're getting damage on the tier two tower. And while this doom, sure he's level three, but look what it's costing them. Costing them a lot of towers. Maybe they can get a fierce blood here, though. And that's still alive for now. CK still looking for that real drift. Ohio's gonna try to find sanctuary in the mid lane. Where uh, Crazy is still at. Crazy is still level 4. KWX by able to farm 9 to 2 for now, but Crazy getting ahead 16 to 6. I mean, you expect Puck to have a lead against a yeah, Tide. Yeah, for sure. The 1 Tide. 1 1 build for Mushi. It works. Tide got his bottle and he did bring himself a stout shield as well, so he doesn't take as much harassment from this Puck. Ohio, by the way, still level 1. Hasn't, hasn't got a single experience point just yet. But he does make NS life a little bit living hell. I mean, he's still level 2 for himself. Yep, and keeping those supports busy, they're not able to TP top to help defend their tower. You know, they got pretty good damage on that tier 2. They got it down to just over half HP. And that'll make pushing it later on easy, too. And the Basilius is still active for Mushi, which signifies that he wants to push with the Siege Creep that he has right now. Oh, Meanwhile, Doom is just Doom is just chilling up here, getting experience, eating creeps when he can. But he's not getting aggressive because he doesn't know where these supports are and doesn't want to get dove. It looks like his supports are just pulling, so that siege is eventually gonna die, and no push is gonna be had from Orange. And Doom just wrote notices that instantly rotates right back to the jungle. Yeah, got some back uh, on the uh, small centaur here. I mean, he's getting so far. He's level four. When he gets level 6, that will be uh, having a big impact, especially since he's going to be level 6 fairly fast compared to the rest of his uh, jungle squad. And with jungle squad, I mean NS as well as Arsard, who are still level 2 and level 3. It's just going yep. very slow for them. They're getting messed with a lot by these treants. Yeah. Just interrupting their pull-throughs. Up, oh. And CK actually gets in on Ohio. He wasn't watching his hero. Gets first-blooded. He was uh, trying to it's, micro those trians. Yeah, that's the second time he got out of position. This time, Reality Ripple's up, and you've got the spirits coming out from West to help burst him down. Yeah, first blood going the way of Virtus Pro, then, and with that, a bit of. I, I want to say a bit of extra experience, but they just killed off a level 1 Nature's Prophet. It's not going to be giving that yeah, much, unfortunately. Not much at all. Every little bit does help, though. Yep. That's and you true. don't want to be dying as an offlaner, ever. Kriana is going to be going towards the Midas, it looks like, has a Gloves of Haste already. Brought in extra clarity as well, so we can continue making trance down here. Meantime, we have a Ravage up on the Tidehunter, so should something happen bottom, should there be a dive? Actually, he cannot TP because he doesn't have a TP skull. We are going to see them trying to run for Ohio again, they're looking for that Reality Rift. This is just free gold if they get the Reality Rift off. They get it off. That's a tether stun, a one second stun, and that is one more hit away from dying. Boom! There we go. In comes Net. He has got that in a snare. In comes X as well. In comes a tether. Net up on Ilden. He tries to run for it. Tower hitting up on him. He should be able to stay alive. A soul assumption comes in. He's still alive. The tower hit is not killing him off. 24 HP. And he lives. Very close there. That Orange so not close. able to make anything happen there. In comes if Crazy. Goes AX for an orb. Goes for Net. Jumps himself in, gets a dream coil, that's gonna be Lena with the Dragon Slave, getting the kill, crazy. Gonna get ravaged, no, KYX5, uh, he wanted to, figured he needed to he run a little bit more. was up, so he wanted to fake cast it to force the phase and then pop it off. But unfortunately for him, crazy didn't bite on the fight, fake out, and uh, just early lead for VP. Yeah, 3 to 0. Oh. And of course with the CK there, I mean with the IO there as well, they get some nice levels up on there. And that's going to be helping them be a lot more aggressive earlier. And of course, that's I mean, Mushi's huge for their experience. And if you look at the gold, because it's a free farming alchemist, uh, the gold lead is actually not that much. If you look at Mushi's build, he's going straight into a Lothar's. He's going to have an insanely quick Lothar's, but he only has one point of stun, so it's not going to be super high amount of damage. I'm expecting him at level seven to get another point of stun instead of continuing this trend of going with Greed. 
Yeah, we have actually now rotation. So we have Io and CK going top. They go for Mushi straight away. Three seconds done comes in. That's gonna be Mushi dead. That's gonna be slowing down his farm and gonna be giving more experience to the CK and the Wisp. In comes an invisible tide on trees. Still has that ravage. There is support hanging around from the Naga Siren from the other side of the map, but he runs into KSI, so that's gonna be them scouting it out. In comes a Ravage, Anchor Smash, kill. That is an S. Dead. First kill going the way of Orange. Net up on Illidan. TP in from Ohio. And this is a horse running for his life. He has got stick charge. This Chaos Bot will try to stun up Net, but it's only a one second stun. And the Riptide will get the kill in the end. Two kills. Good counter kills orange. coming out with that Ravage. Yep. Um. Some good experience for Furon who got there for one of the kills. A good experience for all three of them actually. They definitely needed to get something there. Good rotation though. I think that was worth it for BP despite losing their CK and Wisp. Because they were able to slow down the Alchemist a little bit. And what I say, he actually already has slow cards anyway. He didn't lose that much gold, he's already he's such a low level. And I want to see where he goes to gang. I'm assuming he's gonna be hunting this Wisp and Lena a lot. You know, on this bottom lane, Visage has been sitting down here, getting levels for himself. Mushi might try to initiate on mid, but with a one point in his stun, Radiant's don't think it's going to be enough. I need help with that. He definitely does. For people wondering, I just updated the title for the Twitch stream to Virtus Pro Mushi. Mushi. Well, that's crazy. It's going to be... Ooh, it is enough. It is he enough. He didn't get the face shift off. That anchor smash at level 4 is really hurting. Yeah, he's got a lot of minus armor on him. With minus 4 from Gush, minus 2 from the rank 1, or minus 3 rather from the rank 1 acid spray. And he got the orb off, but he did not have time to get the phase shift off to follow it up. If he had phased that anchor smash, he definitely would have lived. I'm gonna meet them tier 1 tower as a result of that kill. Getting uh, killed off here by Orange. I don't think that there's gonna be enough for Virch Pro to do anything about it. And then all of a sudden, I mean, the game, which started to look go in the way of Virch Pro in terms of kills, is uh, 4 to 3 again. We have the gold graph go going down towards the zero line and once more. Yep. Experience getting the, story. Getting the kill on Puck is always good to slow down his blink dagger. Uh, the most important targets, I think, for them to kill right now are IO or CK. So, you know, especially IO, prevent him from getting level 6. We said Orange is smoking up three heroes to go straight at them. And they actually had their smoke broken because of the camp that was CK are farming. Yeah, they're still gonna go in though. Mushi actually will end up stunning himself, so that's gonna be a bit sad. Yep, yeah, he's gonna still run straight into them. He's spotted yeah. and they initiate on him. Three seconds stun and they try to run. Nature's Prophet TPing as well. There's four people here and Snare comes up on Illidan. There's no level 6 up on Io and he's just gonna let his teammate die, I think. There's no other way. Unless Crazy can do something. Ravage comes in. That's gonna be still the two dead. In comes Crazy. Gets a Dream Coil off, but he is all left by his lonesome right now. <laughs> nice Dream Coil gush. off. And oh, Snare, nice dodge. Nice dodge. Alive. He did get the counter kill on Furion, but this Furion is already sacked beyond belief. He's yeah. level 5 at this point. And I think he died last. Let me double check. Yeah, he did. So he got experience with those two kills and just barely cracked five. He's below this Lena, who's almost seven. Below this Wisp that has died twice now. This is not uh, Ohio's game so far. But he is free around. He can catch up really quick once he does get that Midas popping. Yeah, and he was able to successfully shut down an S a little bit on the bottom lane. Um, of course, now right now, yeah. there's going to be getting level six because X gets initiated on. And oh, actually, I don't know level six just yet. Needs uh, a bit more creeps. So close though. So close! And XP. does have his birds flying around. Uh, there's only one camp that got stacked, or two camps rather. The hard camp that VP was fighting and killed off. And it's easy camp that Mushi is fighting right now that were ca stacked up by his supports early game. So he didn't have that much bonus gold to farm up from the supports. I really He's like the ward on the top stack. lane. The observer ward. Yeah. Because that could actually and be a real six trip now, time. and that might lead to a kill. Exactly. Might lead to a kill very soon here. I'm just, I'm just waiting for it. it There's no detection from the CK Wisp though. They need dust if they want to go for Mushi. True. And even then, it's a little bit risky because once he sees that TP, he's instantly in a low throws away, and you're not fast enough to catch him if he's quick enough. Maybe they can kill KYX by in the mid lane. Never mind. He walks back. I'm just yep. waiting for the right time where they can go. So far, no. Lena is good. up at top right now. 
but Lushi recognizes that there's a level 6 CK Wisp, and he's just playing passive. We have a smoke up, so actually, for orange. X and KYX by with net. Walking towards the bottom lane. Let's see if they can stop so Illidan There's here. still 20 seconds left on Ravage cooldown. It's important to know going into this. Well, there we'll have all their heroes here. Even uh, Mushi rotating in with his Alchemist. In comes the Alchemist, stun. Walking past the sentry ward. Illidan. Gonna get stunned still, though. In comes the tether. They should be relocating away into safety. There we go. TP incoming from the Lina. Arasart. They will try to fight this. They will have to wait though. Light, light strike array. Doom comes up on Mushi as well. That's gonna be Mushi dead. Arsar gives his life for that, but that's a worthy trade. And there comes the combination again. Four seconds down up on oh, X team. Sleep. Nice sleep coming up from net, allowing for everybody to back off. Everybody runs away and nobody dies. No real answer of being used. In comes Crazy Steel with the Dream Coil up on two. Maybe they can still get Ohio and net. Looks like they can. One down. Two down. That's gonna be at least three for one, and that's a very worthy trade. It would have been a worthy trade very, if they only got trip. the if they didn't even get those two kills. Getting Mushi yeah. there. Big deal. And Alchemist, anytime he's not farming, is good time for your team. Mm. And that also finished up the armlet for CK. Very powerful early game item they just picked up. Bird's gonna come in to try to deny this bottom tower. Oh. He'll lose one, but he gets a deny. He gets a deny worth it. And he instantly resummons. Yeah, that was the first tower to go down on the side of orange, so it's a pretty big deal to have it the night for uh, for Verge Pro. They really need that extra core gold. I mean, having that level seven now IO is is great and all that, but he really doesn't have any ways to stay alive just yet. Yep. Head of Midas up on Doom. Uh, who's gonna build the mechanism for them? Is it gonna be the IO still? It could be Wisp. Yeah. Doesn't have to be Wisp though. They don't even necessarily need to build one. It's not one of those items that you just have to, have to have, it's just very useful so teams tend to get it. Interesting skill build coming out from KSI's Doom. He's uh, opting to only have one point Scourge Earth so far oh. and maxing out the level death. He might actually be finding some trouble right here, they find him. Go for a gush, go for net, KSI already dropped. And that is going to be crazy, getting himself away from that one. Tower goes down in the mid lane, smoking successful for orange, buyback from the Doom. In the meantime, Nature's Prophet goes down on the bottom lane. That's a relocate being used to go bottom and kill him off by himself. Nothing really spectacular as uh, Elden gets left behind to farm there. And something that I forgot to mention in the draft is they picked Furion after Wisp was already picked. Yeah. They oh. had to know that the CK was going to be paired with him. Illidan though, he's gonna get killed off here. Gets netted up, lands a two second set upon Mushi, runs for his life. Who knows, maybe someone is gonna come to save him. We still have a net coming up though. Nature's Prophet TPing in, gets a sprout. That's gonna be a kill. Ohio with the last hit. Revenge at last. And meanwhile, VP just takes him a tower. That's a blink up on Crazy now. It's flying out to him. Uh, Arzard is also getting close to a blink. He's got 1700 gold saved up right now. Would be pretty nice, Lena with Lee. And DP is trading a tier 2 for tier 1 now. Good trade. Even though they lost their CK, up tide TPing in. Gotta be careful for that. Yeah, he has that Ravage up, he has a mechanism up for his team as well. So no tier 2 going down today, or at least, well, not at this they very moment. They got damage on it at least. Yeah, some of it. 1700 gold up for, uh, for Mushi, let's see what the rest is building. I mean, no real spectacular things coming out just yet. Next to the Shadow Blade, which of course was the first big item that we saw in the game. Crazy, having his Blink Dagger ready, having now also a Haste Rune picked up. That's going to be helping him a bit. Being more aggressive. The Armlet, of course, on the Chaos Knight is going to be helpful. And the Mechanism for Io is indeed the case. And he just needs the recipe and then he has it complete. And I like the rotation that VP did. However, got nipped out by Orange. They rotated from mid straight to top to try and get a pick off, but Orange saw that it was going to be coming and didn't have anyone farming up there. Uh, there is a little bit of initiation on Tamushi from Crazy, but he doesn't commit. He knows that he has a Shadow Blade. And Crazy does have a Haze bottled right now. And it does look like there's going to be a big team fight up top. Yeah, Orange already so. having five people here. Virtus Pro, they could have five people here with the relocate, of course, so don't yep. understand them. And Wisp is building towards the mech. He opted to not go for things like a bottle or urn or a cane boot, so he's going straight to mech. I'm just gonna make uh, Illidan's CK even tankier and harder to kill. Yep. Orange still hanging around in the top lane. I mean, this is one of the upsides of having the IO in the pool. Even if there's not gonna be a fight, you know that you can always be there, so your carry can still continue farming 
while your entire enemy team is sharing one lane of experience and farm because they are waiting for a team fight that might happen. And actually, that is happening right now. They go for Ohio. Mechanism keeps him out crazy. Orbs himself away from this one. In comes KSI. Knows he's being revealed. Backs off. We still have actually Puck in some trouble. Crazy. He went to the wrong side. Gets picked up by the Visage. X with the last hit. Mushi ending up stunning himself. No relocate used. And losing crazy. Quite diff quite painful actually. They tried to initiate on the Nature's Prophet and get a free pick off on him. Over the orb missed so they didn't get it. It was a nice try though. Yeah, well. Nice try. Oh, not again. asleep. He's on bottom and whiffing. Uh, yep, and Was that's gonna, gonna be Illidan again? running himself out. Tether will be creating some extra speed. And that's gonna be a song. Three second cooldown. Wasted. And Courier just got stunned. Yeah, Ohio might die for it. He gets doomed up. He gets stunned up as well. And that is gonna be a kill. Still worth it, actually. Yep. Uh, the, the thing that isn't worth it is sleeping on cooldown now. They yeah. know that cooldown is three minutes at rank one. That is super long. Uh, now VP might look to take team fights that they otherwise wouldn't, because they don't have to worry about Naga sleep being followed up by a Tide Hunter Ravage. Because that sleep just lets when you don't have any BKBs, that sets up the perfect team fight for Orange. But it's kind of counteractive when you do have BKBs on your team. If they try to sleep in Tide Hunter Ravage. CK who's working towards one will just BKB and not get hit by the Ravage. Guaranteed, because they'll be just spamming that off. You well, know, Orange has a lot of modest armor with this medallion finish, plus acid spray, which they're not even using, uh, to just kill this Roshan. They're actually using Riptide, which I find funny because that doesn't work on Roshan. Anyway, they get to early Roshan kill at 19 minutes with all their modest armor, and Alchemist working towards the Assault Kuros. Already has a Hyperstone. Yeah, looking pretty good for Orange. I mean, the gold graph is still very even. 500 gold only in favor of Verge Pro. Experience graph a bit more, but again, there's two kills difference, so... 4k in favor of Verge Pro so far. The main difference in that one are the two supports for Orange still level 8, while the two supports of Verge Pro are level 9. But really, it's a small difference to see there. And Nature's Prophet slowly but steadily catching up, of course, with his Hand of Midas. Going for a Shadow Blade of his own. And uh, will sooner or later uh, be actually dominating the charts for in terms of uh, net worth and well not net, net, not net worth he won't be able to pass the alchemist if Mushi is able to farm but yeah he'll, he'll get up there though yeah he'll himself. get up there for sure uh this puck from crazy has been being a nuisance just sitting on top lane then the support from orange comes up and they just flush him out they are there's too many heroes here now i can't safely farm up here can't annoy the tide hunter while he's trying to farm up his blink or something so i'm just gonna back out which he does wisely but this is one well, of those KSI things though. is also building straight into a BKB on the doom oh well, that's pretty decent and, and I mean Virch Pro is farming two lanes right now while orange is being kind of forced to stick together purely because of that CK wisp combination they are able to make the best of it and they are actually uh, pounding on a tier 2 bottom right or top right now and they should be able to take it as well after the fortification wears off they might lose their own tier 2 in the mid lane however oh, they use glyph uh, they've got the Naga set up behind already so he's going to be able to ensnare up KSI and they can maybe chase him down here. Yeah, he Tide comes Hunters follow TP. There comes a Doom Fisty. upon net. KSI tries to run for it, but I don't think he can. That's K KYXY with the last hit. KYXY, who's after his mechanism, still saving up for his Blink Dagger, only 15 well, gold away from it. Boom, yes. He could do something crazy, like go straight into a pipe, just for more team fight items for his team, or Vlad, something like that. But I'm assuming it's going to be a Blink. You always want that initiation item on Tide. Yeah, Ohio now getting chased down by Crazy. Getting sprouted up, blinks himself out. Shadow Blade is up on the Nature's Prophet, and Crazy he doesn't have any detection, so we can't really attempt to go for solo kills on him anymore. And indeed, the Blink Dagger is the one that KYX by goes for. With double Shadow Blade up, VP is gonna want to get a gem onto Crazy. They need that to way, get a gem onto Crazy. Yeah, that way he can be the one to play aggressive. He's level 12 now. You really want to be level 14 on Puck before you give him a gem, because that way he's extremely extremely hard to kill without rank 4 phase you can still snipe off the kill on him Dyer's top tower is under attack. what do you think uh, about the ck wisp combination by the way i mean they've done a good job so far in my opinion they haven't been over aggressive because if you look at the dire team orange has tide hunter ult that they tp into they've got naga siren ult that they tp into they've got alchemist stun 
you don't want to be grouped up to TP into these things without BKB. So they're waiting. They have BKB gold up finally on uh, Illidan. It's only 22 minutes in. He's got armor with BKB. He's got nice item progression going. It's not insane. It's not the best progression we've ever seen, but it's nice. He's actually running all the way back to the fountain to pick it up because their courier is dead. The courier is alive it's again, actually. Is oh, it is? Oh, yeah, it's it is. In the bottom lane. Yep, and that was a gem that was being picked up by Crazy. Yep, are still uh, buying it for him, but yeah. Yep, the Doom is very, very, very close to his own BKB. He's actually gonna have it about when his. Whoa! Devour Ravage for Crazy! Crazy dead. And that's, that's a, a gem. Oh gem. my god, that's huge! That's insane! Right as they get the gem, they lose the gem. So if you look over at BP's shop. They've got another nine minutes to go until they have a new gem. That's that is insanely not big. Good. It's almost 32 minutes exactly that their gem is going to pop up. But for VP, they still have these two BKBs now. So they are able to fight. They just have to make sure that they carry a lot of protection on their supports. Dust, sentries, maybe even some yeah. dust onto Crazy because he's there. Or maybe they can win a team fight that comes in right now. KSI not fast enough on the fingers with his BKB. Will get picked off first. BKB turned on by Illidan though, gets prouded up and then snared. He can't go anywhere and just gets pounded on by Mushi. Tries to run for it, gets a two second stun up on the Naga Siren. But runs for it, gets a gosh, gets a stun. That's another kill going away of Mushi while Io is able to get himself out of there for now. With, with his TP, so he's yeah. gonna come right back. He's gonna come back. And, and he's he got some die. creeps to his left that he could maybe tether to. But let's see. Get it off. Nope. nope. He tries. Dead instantly. And Mushi was even sitting over there to the yeah. side, ready. And he was still tether stunned as well. Still got ones yep. off, but. Orange getting three kills. And um, Virtus Pro not getting their gem back just yet. Orange is doing a nice job of controlling this game. They know that with their superior team fight, uh, VP wasn't able to fight them early. They used that to get some big advantages in the game. They took Roshan. They. Got a tower lead. Granted, it's only one tower, and their mid is really low. They do have that lead, having the tier two down on top. Uh, only 30 seconds left in the ages, though, so they're not going to be able to get any more use out of this other than that last team fight. Oh. They're grouping around mid. Ravage is off cooldown in 30 seconds. I don't expect them to fight before that's up. Yeah. By the way, for the first time this game, the experience graph is actually going the way of orange right now. And actually, they are still looking to perhaps fight Shadowblade Pop for Alchemist, see if he can find some people, but Virtus Pro play, playing it fairly safe. Look, they're hugging their tower. The CK Wisp is split up, obviously. They can TP in soon. Yeah. It's three seconds left on cooldown. And I'm waiting to see when... Well, Orange is going to do it right now, actually. I lied. Maybe. Well, a popular thing to do when you're against the CK Wisp is to not gank the other players in the team, but to gank the CK Wisp, so they can't teleport in and help out. Oh. The one thing you have to worry about when you do that is finding the Wisp first, because if you go on the CK, the Wisp can always save his life. And here goes Mushi. He'll end up stunning himself, though. Yep. And that's gonna be, uh, maybe NS trying to relocate himself out. No, in comes the Ravage. That's gonna be too dead. No relocate out, no saving CK. And two dead Good heroes. Gank. Yep, orange. Mushi stunning himself didn't end up making a difference. That should be a tier two tower dead. It definitely is unless there's buybacks, which there aren't, and I don't, wouldn't expect him to buy back to defend a tier two anyway. Maybe KSI is able to take down the tier two mid finally as well. I mean, they have have already taken down most of its HP. I I like the Doom pick. They haven't really gotten much use out of Doom at all this game. They've been ganking with Doom. They've just been having him try to farm up. And the only kill that they really got with him that was big was when he doomed Mushi at the bottom tier 1. Yeah. Right now he is hunting. Furon did split up in TP top. And Furon's just gonna Lothar's away right away. The bad thing for this Doom is he doesn't have a Lothar's or a Blink Dagger, so he has no real way of initiating and getting Doom onto a hero that has Lothar's. Which is kind of hurting him, but he was forced into this BKB by the lineup that Orange has. Meanwhile, Nature's Prophet working towards that hex right now. He's got an ultimate orb, 1400 gold. It's about 2200 away right now. Uh, the Naga's got 2300 saved up. Not sure what he's going to go for. Their Visage has, is 1100 away from Zagonims, which is always a good item on Visage that you like to see picked up. 
This triple bird's so powerful. And Tide has 2,400 on top of the blink mech that he has had for a while now. Refresher or BKB? What are you expecting? Or Link? Uh, I'd, I'd expect the Refresher to come out. It's just such a powerful item on him. Or he could even go for something like a Shiva's or a Hex himself. Those aren't too bad either. Time will tell, I guess, Ooh. for now. I mean, also Pop Arzard, going for a side of the vice. It's pretty Arzard close. Arzard passed the dust over to uh, KSI's Doom. Okay. And Arzard got the early point booster, and then he followed it up with Treads. He's just getting HP to tank himself up. Yeah, at some point you said like he was close to the Blink Dagger, but didn't end up going yeah, for he, it in the end. He ended up going for a point booster instead of more aggressive plays with Blink. Smart choice, I think, in the current situation, current state so of the game. Top. Okay, wait, Blink expire. Tied. Running for his life, in comes Mushi, charging up his stun. With the Shadow Blade, looking for Illidan, there goes the stun. BKB, though, make sure it gets disjointed, but that's a BKB charge. And no tether, of course, because you can't tether when you're BKB. TP's himself out, we still have Crazy, maybe in some trouble. Never mind, in comes KYX5 with the blink, looks for a gosh, finds it on our start. TP out, should be enough. Yep. There's still an alchemist on falling, but... The thing gets real big when you're following it. Yeah. And it hits. Nature's Prophet still able to pick up an S, and Crazy actually still picking up the Visage in the mid lane. That's the gem back! Pick up your gem! No, in comes the song, they really want to take that gem. <laughs> I think that's worth it. That gem is pretty important. Yep. There's still three minutes on restocking for VP, so being able to pick that back up is pretty good for Orange. Well, one for one trade in the end, support for support, but that gem would be so big if Virtus Pro was able to take it back with that one. But no can do. Ohio almost ever enough for his Mystic Staff. And Side of the Vice, I th ah, Puck's so close. They need a couple more towers. I mean, there's still three towers standing on the side of Orange. Goldcraft is going the way of Orange really heavily now, or at least ha more heavy than it's been this game so far. 5k in their favor. Experience Craft, not that much in their favor just yet, but still 2.3k. Experience in the favor of Orange. Okay, we actually Doom still not showing what he goes for. Doom just picked up Travels, which I think is kind of a peculiar choice here. Because his team's behind, and he's not getting... And he can't, like, popular builds on Doom tend to be team foot auras that help to tank him up, like Vlad's, Shiva's, uh, stuff like that. And he's just not going for it. And Roshan coming out from Orange, they have a lot of modest armor, so they kill this really quick. Yep. DP knew is up, they couldn't do anything about it. Oh. Tide almost ravaged there. Yeah, I wanted we to blink ravage, but only finds yep, himself. Saw the an flick idol. away, so it was like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste it. No, with the ages though, Orange. Can they go high ground? Or can they go for last tier 2 at least? I think Orange, they just got a fresh BKB on Alchemist. They're probably going to wait until their Furion picks up his Lothars. And they might try to get a pick before going high ground. But they honestly have such a huge team fighting advantage. Uh, with sleep coming up off cooldown in 7 seconds that they probably could go high ground. Knowing that they're a Eastern team, they might just use Naga images. Combined with Alchemist, who has the Aegis, to just chip away at the base tower if they get the tier 2. I do not expect DP to put the defense at tier 2 at all. Now you see that they're just focusing on split pushing and maximizing the farm, while uh, Orange is pushing away at it. Yeah, I mean that's tier 2 death as the last one standing on the side of Verge Pro. Hex is up for crazy. There's also the gold for Hex on Furion, he's using the chicken to bring it out to himself right now. Well, let's see how far they can get. The fortification is used. They've got their summons in there, hitting away at it. Yeah. And also Ohio from the low ground, of course, helping out with this as well. And Mushi, since his ult faded, he didn't want to take any risks. He didn't even hit it himself, despite having the Aegis. And they're actually playing it very safe. They're backing off again. Oh yeah, all these Eastern teams kind of play it safe. They don't rush straight in to try to take high ground. Because that's where a lot of games get thrown away. And I would know a little bit something about that. Anyway. True. Extinct, 170 gold away, 175 gold away from his Aghanims. He would love to be able to finish that off. There's still a slow siege coming in on this middle lane. They, they backed up though to let Furion push top out a little bit. That way they don't have to worry about split push coming from VP. 
Second gem picked up right now, by the way. Crazy. Crazy was so cocky away. there. He could have gotten hexed by the Furion and killed, but he was able to get away. Yeah, he has got his hex up. He's just waiting for the right target. Let's get that Envy's room going. Looking for the Dream Quill. Hack gets hexed up now. In comes the Ravage, which kind of hit onto Net up on the CK. He goes for a split. He goes for Net. Gets a two second stun. His Doom is already dead. Now the CK drops as well, and that is gonna make it 2-0 in favor of Orange. Still losing the Naga Siren to the puck in the end, in the back end of the fight. But Crazy does get forced away from this matchup and has to be TPing himself back towards his base. They are able to harass Orange out of their base for now, though. But I don't think they're gonna be stopping from going in again. I mean, either they want to force out the buyback, which is not there for the CK, or they want to take Rax, and it's gonna be the latter. And Doom was unable to get his BKB off there, or even his Doom. Again, for the uh, second time. That is so, so bad. This Doom pick hasn't paid off at all for VP. Just because they haven't been utilizing it. I think it might have been a pick that they haven't practiced much. Just judging off the way that they're playing with the hero. They look a little uncomfortable with it. Well. But also Orange. Uh, Doom is a more popular pick in the Eastern scene. They know how to play against that hero, you just kill him before he gets the spells off. Reality or yeah, they're gonna try to go for a gank up on Ohio. They use the dust, they should be able to get this kill, but they get Big a stun. double alchemist on by Mushi. And Ness already goes down, that's gonna be Doom dead as well. CK trying to TP himself out, should be able to do just that. Still two dead for one nature's prophet that can just buy himself back and, and is back already with the push. Yeah, he already bought back and then he's just like, oh hey, they're both dead. We're taking another lane of racks. Yep. They know for sure that that Doom doesn't have buyback because they had just killed him, took Rax, they didn't buy back And then. they still have an Aegis. Yes, they do, for a good amount of time, too. Yeah. So, a little over two minutes. And Virtus Pro is just not looking that strong, not looking that, uh, uh, or as aggressive as I was expecting them to maybe be, but it's just because it's not possible. Orange, with a very smart draft here, making sure that the CK Wisp combination was something that they prepared for, something that they see coming, and something that they can handle. Shiva's picked up on Tide now. That's another thing to help kill the CK images right there. And they get the melee racks and they just back out. They don't want to take any risks. Despite having the Aegis, they're, they actually fake back this. They're still sitting around. And there's the items complete on the Visage. Still 27 seconds out of summons. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Crazy is going to be in some trouble here. Furion's not close enough now. to go for the Hex, so... Furion's sitting back to make sure that he doesn't get initiated on. In comes Mushi. Gets Hexed out before he can stun, so stuns himself. BKB turned on. This time KZI looks for Doom, finds it up on KYXY. Can't find the damage though, and the song does not help him because it actually works against him. He was the only target that was left there. Illidan will be the next target. Hexed up, killed off, double kill. Go in the way of Ohio, buyback from the CK. But it looks like it's already too late. Our start getting killed up by Mushi actually is able to get himself safe here still comes the Ravage for Illidan alone he turns on his BKB tries to run for it and may be able to use it maybe able to get away with it as well KWXY will be the one to go down in comes the stun gets disjointed Ohio next target Ohio reality drifted is able to run himself away now Mushi light strike array stunning up Mushi the hacks was there as well it is Illidan that is the one to die though and Mushi he still has that Aegis He's just able to pick them up one by one. Now the Aegis goes. Crazy getting hexed up. Ohio and x -Ting still around there. Crazy goes down again. This is Virtus Pro losing a big ass team fight and not able to get back from it. The GG gets called. Orange win the first game of this matchup for the group stages for group B for the international three. Orange showing that they prepared for CK Wisp in a big way. Yep. Naga's a hero that I don't think too many Western teams have used as a counter to CK Wisp. And all he does is, like, if you're the TP early game onto him, if sleeps up, they can just dodge the fight completely. Pop the sleep and run away. It's that simple. With good positioning on the Naga. And a support Naga can easily have good positioning because you're not going to be tempted to farm anything at all. Uh, really well played game from Orange. I agree. Overall. We're gonna be uh, jumping ourselves into the second game, see if Virtus Pro can make it an even score, because as said at the start of the game, this is an important game, could make it or break it for your top four place that you want to have, because then you make it to the winner's bracket, and otherwise you'll be in the loser bracket, which is where you do not want to be. So stick around, and we'll be right back with another game of Dota 2.